Madam President, I come down to talk about the Small Business Jobs and Tax Relief Act, and I, and I come from the small business world. I know people come down on the floor here and on the other side, and they talk about being from the small business world, and I always like to look and see what that really means. And it's always amazing to me, you know, when you're from the small business world, here's what it really is about. It's not working for some corporation, having a nice title, uh, not really worrying about if you can make it from day to day or worrying about a payroll or at the end of the day, if the business isn't good, you don't, you don't get a check. That's how it works in the small business world. And so when I hear people come down and talk about small business, um, it surprises me, to be very frank with you, the lack of understanding, the lack of knowledge that they have about the small business world. I, I've been in it from the age of 14. My wife has grown a business from serving and selling smoked salmon on a street corner to now a couple retail stores and doing very well, but has struggled just like everyone else, had to deal with the bureaucracy, had to figure out how to raise the capital, put retirement money on the table, uh, maximize her credit cards, uh, do everything possible to take her dream and make it a reality, just as I've done for all my years in the small business world. So I come here not just as a U.S. Senator from Alaska, representing Alaskans and small businesses, but also someone who has lived it, worked it, understands it. And we have a chance, and I appreciate the 80 to 14 vote to let us proceed to this bill, which is a Small Business Jobs and Tax Relief Act. This is an important bill, has two components that seem simple in a lot of ways, but have great impact. And first, I want to mention the idea that uh, you can get a tax credit for hiring people. Now, some say, well, small businesses won't use a tax credit just to hire people. And I, and I maybe agree to a certain extent on that. But why is this important? If you're a small business person and you're going to increase your payroll, maybe you're giving raises or bonuses and so forth, or you're going to hire part-time or full-time people, if you hire those people, and just a clear example is if your payroll is 200000 and your payroll goes up by $20,000 to $220,000, you'll get a tax credit of 10% which is $2,000. Now, what will that small business person do with that $2,000? A big business that just gets lost in some pile, maybe goes to some corporate salary. But here's what a small business person will do to it. They'll get that $2,000. They might now go recarpet their leasehold improvement or their rental space that they have that they're using for their small business. What does that mean? Well, that $2,000 now goes to the carpet layer, the carpet seller. What do they do with it? They put it into the next part of their economy. It just keeps moving much quicker and faster in the economy. Matter of fact, every dollar uh, that you see out there has a multiplier effect that's pretty significant for small business. So the one piece is giving tax credits for small businesses to increase their payrolls. Payroll may be for increased salaries or for increased employment. Either way, you're putting more money into the working people of this economy, and therefore, they're putting back into the economy. The second piece of the act is uh, the depreciation. And, you know, if you're not a small business person, this is, you don't really pay a lot of attention to this. But the way the IRS codes work is if you invest in things like new equipment, carpet, sheetrock, lighting, whatever, the IRS has these uh, schedules to depreciate this over many, many, many years. Here's how it works. So we have first the tax credit for payroll. Now we have a second piece of this bill, which is accelerated or bonus depreciation, which means if you're thinking of a, an idea, and I, I will tell you a small business that I just visited in Alaska called Lime Solar uh, by Chet Dyson and Jesse Moe. These are two young men who are starting a small business to sell solar products for home and businesses. But they got a leasehold space. They rented a space. It had no sheetrock, no lighting. They're responsible for paying for all that. So they invested. They cleaned it up, sheetrocked it, fixed it all up, put equipment in. All that expense now, if this bill passes, can be written off in the first year instead of depreciating it over multiple years. Why is that important? Because let's assume they spent $100,000 renovating their facility and they're in a 25% tax bracket, they will save in the first year $25,000 like that instead of spreading that over the next 10 or 15 years. Why is that important? That $25,000 they save in 
taxes or depreciation, they'll be able to reinvest, reinvest into their business as they struggle to figure out how to build their markets. Or another friend of mine, Jack Lewis, who opened up his second restaurant recently, Firetap. You know, restaurants are not cheap business. I've been in that business. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. It's a tough business. Margins are thin. But again, he invested. He built it, built it all out, out of scratch. Now he can, again, under this bonus depreciation schedule, depreciate it, write it off in the first year. That's a huge benefit for these small businesses. Uh, when I look at uh, another small company called Steam Dot Coffee, it's a small coffee company. Jonathan White owns it. You know, they brew their own coffee, have their own coffee, and they also uh, package it, manufacture it for resale. Well, that takes a lot of equipment. Now they get to write that off in the first year. So all this bill does, and it's simple, but yet has huge impact. Matter of fact, in the depreciation, it's estimated that for every dollar we give in the tax benefit, there's a $9 benefit to the GDP. One to nine ratio. Any business person would love that deal. That's a great deal. Uh, so this bill, I hope, uh, our colleagues, they've shown by 80 to 14, this is a great bipartisan effort. I hope they now move to the next stage and maybe we'll have some amendments or work through it. But let's do it for the small business community of this country, for the state that I live in, for every state. The state in New York is piled with small business. When you go through New York City, every inch of the street is a small business person. That's what drives this economy. That would, that's what makes this economy happen. And that's where we need to put our investment. And I know, uh, I'll end on this note, I know we'll have you know, some pro forma votes, as I call them, show and tell. We'll have a vote on this 20% deduction or uh, tax rate deduction that uh, is being proposed by the House and sounds good, but there's no guarantee that's gonna go back into the economy. Matter of fact, it's gonna be for, you know, if you're a hedge funder, you'll, you'll get that break. If you're an attorney, you'll get that break. If you're a small business person, you'll get that break. But there's no guarantee that that money goes back into the economy. So if we're going to give these tax incentives, let's make sure it's working the economy and building jobs and building a future for us. So, Madam President, I just wanted to come down, speak on this bill, and encourage uh, my colleagues to support the Small Business Jobs and Tax Relief Act, not only through the pro forma vote that we had yesterday to get it to move, but also to really pass it. We've done a great job the last few months passing a lot of legislation out of this body. Let's continue that effort and help our economy grow. Madam President, I, uh, I think I have some announcement. Madam, uh, Madam President, I have four unanimous consent requests for committees to meet during today's session of the Senate. They have a, the approval of the majority and minority leaders. I ask unanimous consent that these requests be agreed to and, and that these requests be printed to the record. Without objection.